I had just pulled out of the parking lot at the Welcome Center in Lula, Mississippi. I was on Route 61, otherwise known as the America's Blues Highway. I was driving from Sewanee, Tennessee, where I had currently held the position of, get this, the Tennessee Williams Playwright-in-Residence at Sewanee, the University of the South. Four years previous to this, I had never even heard of Sewanee. Now it had become such an important part of my life. The town, the school, my students, my colleagues, my friends, my community. The past three years, I had attended the Sewanee Writers' Conference. The past two years, I had taught at the Sewanee Young Writers' Conference. And now I had just begun my fellowship as the visiting playwright. All of this was possible because of Tennessee Williams' bequest to the university. Everywhere I turn in my personal and professional life, I am reminded of him. So in a moment of clarity, it hit me. There is only one thing to do when something this synchronistic is happening, and that's to pay attention. To truly pay attention. To be present in the moment and pay attention to my surroundings, my environment, and especially to Tennessee Williams. So, I get the idea that in the 100th anniversary year of Tennessee Williams' birth, I am going to give him a birthday present. But what do I get him? What do I get a man who seems to have had and lost everything? It has to be an extraordinarily special present. One, because it's Tennessee Williams. And two, let's be frank about it. His money was funding my fellowship and my fellowship was funding his gift. So I decide I'm going to write Tennessee Williams a play. I'm going to research his life and scribe him a gift. I map out a journey of all the important cities and towns that had influenced Williams and his work. And so I pick, for some reason, to start my journey with Clarksdale, Mississippi, where many people come to research the home of the blues, to go to the festivals for the blues, to listen to the blues at the dives and the juke joints, visit the hospital-turned-motel where Bessie Smith died for the blues and imbibe generally in all things blues. Blues music is not why I'm going to Clarksdale. The real reason for my trip to Clarksdale is to visit the home of America's most poetic dramatist. Williams lived in Clarksdale for just a few years as a boy, but I want to visit his landscape, his images, his language, his people, his inspiration, his characters. So, just a few minutes outside of reaching Clarksdale, I start to have second thoughts. I start thinking, what if this project is just a really bad idea? What if I don't make any discoveries about Williams? What if I don't learn anything about Williams' life? What if I have to go back to Sewanee and tell them that the project was a failure? I am a sham. I'm not a playwright. I'm not a scholar. I'm not a research. What if, what if, what if? All these thoughts were coming through me. This wild doubt rushed through my body, and I started to panic. But right in that moment, in my car, on Route 61, out of the corner of my eye, I see her. 
I press my foot firmly on the brakes. I pull over to the side of the road. I look in the rearview mirror and I squint. I turn my body around. I put the car in reverse. And I back up until I am right there in front of her. And there she stands. Right past a dirt road and a field of cotton is this beautiful image. This fragile looking tree. And I think to myself, this looks exactly how I think Blanche de Bois might look. Now, I don't know trees. At that time, I didn't know trees. I didn't know what kind of tree this was, but something told me that this white tree must be Blanche de Bois. Now, de Bois means woods, and Blanche means white, and the two of them together mean white woods, and so I think this species of trees must be Blanche de Bois. It looks exactly like Blanche de Bois. It looks like she has a white crumpled up blouse and a paper thin skirt. And I study the tree. I get out of my car and I approach the tree and I actually say to the tree, I think I've come all this way just to meet you. And in that moment, I realized that this is going to be a journey about me learning how to ask the right questions to the right sources at exactly the right time. I have the answer. Now I just have to figure out the questions. And so I stand there and I say to the tree, I actually ask the tree, is your name Blanche? And the wind rushes right by us and the crown of her head nods and the branches of her arms reach out further and she sways what looks like it could be Blanche de Bois's hips and she whispers ever so slightly in my ear welcome to Clarksdale <laughs>